Oh, Bobby, I will mute myself because I'm in a pretty noisy place right now. So basically, I'll leave it on to you. I'm sorry for this. I'm not used to this kind of things, but I have to. This is small dog barking. Just saw me. No worries. So hello, everybody. This is the trade finance um, working group for Hyperledger, a special interest group. Um, and it is September 29th. And this meeting is being recorded. Um, I just want to show you the agenda for today. Um, today, during the trade finance, um, I am Bobby Mascara. I am the uh, mentor for the Giving Chain project, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, and we're here to give a presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about our project, and then we're going to open it up for questions and discussions. Um, I have a few people with me, and I'll introduce them in a moment. So, uh, again, this is a Linux Foundation hosted call. So the antitrust policy is displayed on your screen. Please take a moment to read it over um, and abide by it during the call. Okay, and just another reminder that this cool call is being recorded, which will be made available on the Trade Finance um, Wiki page along with this presentation. So uh, we're here to present the Giving Chain. And basically what the Giving Chain is, is a social impact project um, where we were trying to make the most um, have the most um, effect in our community um, by creating a platform to make it easy for donors to get their donations to uh, recipients in a decentralized, uh, dignified way. Um, so we try to do this and also creating an immutable record of that donation so that um, the donors can actually prove and see where their donation wound up. Um, and that was the goal of the project. So um, I'm gonna introduce the project. We ran the project in 2019 um, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And then I'm gonna talk about the mentorship program and then I'm gonna turn it over to my three mentees and they are two whoever's on the call and they're gonna run the rest of the presentation. And I'm very proud and excited about that. So here we go. So again, I'm Bobby Mascara. Um, I'm on the technical steering committee of Hyperledger for at least another week or two, um, unless I get voted back in. And I'm also the, co uh, the chair of the learning materials working group um, where this, kind, this project kind of started from. Um, and I'm gonna let Hardik, my mentee, introduce himself. Hello, thank you, Bobby. Uh, my name is Hardik Gupta. I'm the project manager of uh, the Hyperledger Giving Chain, Uttarakhand, India. And I'm also the mentee selected for the project again. And I'm also like been working with the learning material working group and, I, and I'm really excited on being a part of it of, even after my project. Yes, thank you. Madhu, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Madhu Bhatia and I'm from, I'm the project manager for the uh, Hyperledger Giving Chain Women India. And I'm in the blockchain and working with the Bobby with this uh, a very uh, great project that is the Giving Chain. Thank you. Thank you, Madhu. And I'm not sure if um, uh, Mona's on the call, but um, our other, um, person who helps us out is Mona from uh, Rutgers University, and she's been working on the technical side of this um, very hard with Hardik, who um, they've made great progress, which we'll talk about that in a minute too. So that's basically our team and the project itself. Again, um, it, it, it started as a grassroots um, project. I run the meetups, the Hyperledger meetup in Princeton and the Hyperledger um, blockchain and AI meetup. And there's a lot of members. Lot of and we had been meeting for a really long time and talking about um, blockchain and discussing blockchain. And in the summer of 2019, we actually wanted to see if we were able to create a blockchain project. So the people in the meetups gave up so much time of their summer. We met every week um, and we 
created through these checkpoints you see on your screen, a social impact project. So if you answer the questions that are contained in these checkpoints, you will actually build the project and I'll show you how that works. So the first checkpoint um, is your impact opportunity. So we asked ourselves in the project, how can we make the most impact? Well, I live in New Jersey and this is um, the garden state because in August, all the farmers have lots of produce that it's excess. Um, so we thought that we would make um, a vehicle to get those excess farm goods to um, the food banks. Um, and I also um, had an association with a gentleman who knew where homeless vets were in our community. Um, and we decided also to give um, items to the vets um, that you know are not um, able to make it to food banks um, for their own personal reasons. Um, so that was the scope of the project. So we selected our challenge and that we were gonna build this system to get the food supplies from one place to another. Um, and the, the, prob the scope of the problem was, you know, how do you do this? How do you let the farmers know that we're gonna come pick the stuff up and let the food banks know we're gonna drop stuff off? Um, so we decided to do food drives um, and again, collect from the local farmers. Um, so the checkpoint two is to start developing your business associations. Because while this is going on, there's two teams. There's a business team and a tech team. So the business team has to define the parameters for the tech team. So we had to define our donors. Who our donors look like? Who are going to be the transporters? And who are going to be the recipients? And how can blockchain permanently tie this together? Um, so again, um, the business model was given to the tech team and the tech team then had to look at it and say, well, what do we need? So basically the first thing is the farmers need to create um, a tag or a, a ticket, so to speak, to let the system know that there's a donation to be picked up. And once that ticket is created, it gets sent to the system where the, um, the recipient, no, that's good. The, um, donor sends it out to the system for um, people to pick up. So in other words, like a transporter will say, oh, I have um, the time to get that ticket and we'll go and at the same time collect um, the ticket off of the giving bag. It will also scan a barcode that goes into the system to track it like the digital twin of the supply chain item. Um, so once the driver accepts the donation and the ticket, he has to alert the recipients that he has a donation and it's, you know, come get, it. we're going to drop it off. I need your address. So the recipient receives that um, tag, they accept it, and then the driver will take the donation to the food bank or the um, location where it's needed. Um, our checkpoint four was to measure our impact. Well, we had a big impact. We um, delivered 650 pounds of food to the food banks and we gave 55 giving bags to the homeless people in our community. Um, and the code, what we did for the code was, um, again, we had an amazing group of people who just donated all their time. They took the Sawtooth Lake example, which was an example from the Sawtooth folks over at Hyperledger, and the example used to track um, fish from the ocean to the um, restauranteurs plates um, so they can prove authenticity of where the fish came from and that it was handled and, and kept at the right temperature um, through that supply chain. So we took out the um, fish and we put in the giving bags. Um, and this is an example of how we tracked again, the one a giving bag through the system to the donation on the project day. So the project day was a lot of fun. Um, the group up on the left is um, ALIS, which is the Youth Leaders Alliance Leaders of um, America. So it was um, this organization that went to the farmers and collected the food. Um, we also had uh, gyms, uh, local gymnastics arenas, um, nursery schools, even food mills collecting food for us. And we transported them ourselves. We were the transportation system. So the people, again, who donated all their time, donated that whole weekend and drove to the food banks. And again, this is uh, 
where we delivered the um, stuff. One of the side effects of the project that, that we didn't realize was when we were in um, the office gathering, we put all the food together and we're getting it ready to go to the food banks and getting ready to go to the homeless vets. Our kids were involved. So we had our kids sit down and look at all this stuff that we collected and create these giving bags for the homeless. And then they had to think about what homelessness is like and what would you want in this bag if this is all you had. Um, so that was a great um, side effect of the project, so to speak, for our kids. Um, the project did, um, the final um, checkpoint is to submit this and uh, present it to people. So we were able to, through our association with the Hyperledger Social Impact Group, we were able to uh, secure a spot at the Big Apps Blockchain Challenge, where we won honorable mention for the project. Um, it did not fit their categories, um, so they made a category for us. Um, and that won recognition from the Government Blockchain Association, where um, the project won the Social Impact Award for 2020. Um, and we got to present it at the Capitol. Um, great exposure for the project. Um, and what that led to um, is the Hyperledger uh, mentorship program. So we applied to the Linux Foundation hosts um, mentorship projects every year. And so we applied the giving chain and um, it was accepted. And then we had a lot of students apply um, and we have three mentors or men mentees, sorry, uh, working on the project. And it is a six months project and they have do donated so much of their time and worked so hard and I couldn't be prouder. The mentorship program, the purpose of it is to get these new developers into the Hyperledger community with hands-on learning opportunities, um, their technical skills. I know um, my mentees have been to sawtooth maintainers calls, firefly maintainers calls, social impact calls. So they're getting a nice taste of the community through the project. Um, and we do want them to continue being um, active community participants. So one of the things we're trying to get of this is how to get people involved in open source community projects um, and get new onboarding processes going for these new developers. Um, and again, what we offer the mentees is exposure to unbelievable amount of tools. They learn about GitHub, open source. They learn the chat rooms, how they work, the mailing lists, how they work, um, the wiki page, which is really the heart and soul of the Hyperledger community. They learn how to edit and make contributions to that. Um, and I know uh, one of the mentees, Mona, um, found a bug in one of the codes and reported it and had it fixed. So again, they're working through these tools very well. Um, so now I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to my mentee to talk about how we've developed this project through the same checkpoints, but for 2021. So here's Hardik. And again, I couldn't be prouder of these guys. So take it away. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So again, Bobby, thank you for giving me this opportunity. So, um, okay. So for, for the agenda of today, I will be giving an introduction, like how how like the two, two, two new projects that we are going to cover for the Giving Chain 2021. And then we are again going to go through all the checkpoints that Bobby had already discussed. And we are going to see what new changes that we have brought because the business point of view is almost the same, but the technical part has changed a lot. It's, it's completely changed. There are new ideas. Uh, there are new things that has to be discussed. And also the picture in the left was created by Madhu. Okay, sorry, Bobby, can you just get back? I need to give, give credits to her. So this picture shows her project in, in a way. So, uh, it was created for um, getting the donations, but you all, as you all can see that it, 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 um, it gives us the, it gives out the idea of what her project is and how it can be sorted or how it can get, or how it can be worked on. So next slide, please. Okay, so uh, like we have already introduced ourselves. So also the the picture on the right was the design. The uh, upper one was design created by uh, Bobby. It it is a great design. I'm still waiting for my t-shirt. I know Madhu is also, but uh, we are really excited about the t-shirts. Uh, currently, I'm wearing the Hyperledger fifth year anniversary one. So, yep, mm, still waiting for these. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, for the checkpoint one, uh, the impact opportunity. So we are again going to have the Princeton project, the project that Bobby did in 2019. We are going to have it again. All the donors, the recipients, the volunteers are going to be the same. Uh, for my project, I'm the project manager of Giving Chain India Uttarakhand. So I'm going to explain my project in much detail further. And then the third project is the Giving Chain Indian, sorry, the Giving Chain India Women. Uh, the project is uh, organized and, and, and be, being managed by Madhu. Again, we are going to see what the project is in much detail further. So Bobby, can you go on next slide? Thank you. So uh, I'm going to answer the, um, answer the questions uh, that we asked ourselves, like uh, first was like, what is, what is the challenge? For my project, the challenge was to build an agile and a transparent network for the people that has been suffering or, ha or have been suffering from the flood damages. Uh, the people that have lost their homes, their schools, their, uh, their way of earning their daily bread just because of floods. Because Uttarakhand is a place on northern parts of India where uh, these holy rivers flow most of these most of the holy temples or the religious temples are based or have been in Uttarakhand so the Uttarakhand is a great um, place for tourism so so uh, also like when there are rivers the floods happen so my problem was to was to bring aid to these people that has been suffering from these so like what was the scope of, of my project so for for this summer i'm planning on creating a proof of concept uh, a poc for my um, project that can not just be used in 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 uttarakhand india specifically but can be used in anywhere or any place that has been so uh, where people have been suffering from not just floods but but problems related to this so the third question that we asked our, ourselves was why is blockchain needed uh, again that's a simple one because like uh, creating a supply like block like there is no better technology for creating a better supply chain can we go into the next next slides okay so these are the images that i've used to show oh, can you just get back so that yep so like uh this this is one of the most holy river that we uh like in, in India, the Ganga. So when it overflows, uh, like this is how uh, the scenario look like. Because these homes are built near this near their, these rivers again, like because of the the holiness, the the religious sentimental that people have, and also because uh, that's how been like the, that's how most of the villages are being built in India. So uh, when these river o overflows yes as you all can see that parts are like like all these vehicles are stuck there there is no transport between between um, villages the there is no way of um, sending electricity no way of sending uh, like internet all these people have been uh, like starving for months like um, for weeks they they don't even get things like like a roof over their head so yes can we get on the next slide ITBV is is the Indian Tibetan police. Uh, so these uh, these people like are really brave. They they work on clearing these tunnels. They work on clearing parts. They they work on like everything that that's that's related to clear like getting the things back to normal. So I I, I want to keep that photo because I know that these people can be our volunteers can can be the people who who do uh, great things for our project. So yes. Okay, so for the next project, I would like uh, Madhu to explain the whole thing. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, this is uh, the project is the uh, Giving Chain India Women, and it is uh, uh, the scenario is that an, it is an estimate that uh, 355 million Indian women and girls uh, must find ways and they are coping with uh, monthly menstruation hygiene. The My Project is based on the uh, menstruation hy hygiene of the uh, unprivileged women and the girls. So majority of uh, rural women in India, they use clothes and rags for their feminine hygiene. And uh, these materials uh, might uh, predispose uh, their women to uh, reproductive tract infections or UTI because they have no choice. That 
pads or tampons are too expensive as they have uh, the countries are uh, imposing the lot of gst taxes on the raw materials or on the, on the uh, Mm, madhu is it me or just uh, like no one can hear oh, i guess he has internet yes issues. i think we lost um madhu for a moment um let's see if she can get back yeah but <laughs> there she I'm, is uh, my internet is unstable bit so means uh, uh, it is uh, it is very uh, problematic for them to wash the their napkins with the soap and drying them in the sunlight and due to the lack of water or the private facilities or there are many cultural taboos associated with the menstruation so they are doing this kind of uh, activities like washing in the uh, just river and all these things so this is a, a statistical chart that around the world the feminine uh, hygiene products are taxed at rates highly than expected for essential items and even in india sanitary pads are considered as the luxury item and many women and girls can't afford so the giving chain india women is an initiative in the direction to make a difference in the indian women life and i am uh, extremely thankful to bobby for giving me a chance to work with her and for working with the empowerment of women and giving a better life to the women by providing this uh, sanitary hygiene uh, napkins to the uh, that uh, rural and unprivileged women thank you we're very proud of you madhu <laughs> very proud <laughs> next Yes, thank you, Madhu. Uh, okay, so uh, Giving Chain needs uh, its project managers, just like uh, Bobby, me, and Madhu. We three are project managers. Uh, since two thousand nineteen, when we started working on this project, because our first aim was to make it as scalable as possible, like as possible. We wanted this project to not just run on uh, like different places, but it, but it's. something that can be uh, implemented anywhere like if something happens anyone can just like be some like like can take the charge and start the whole process of the um, the giving chain so we we get to know that okay sorry can you get back so yes so um, we get to know that project managers uh, like like we need project managers not just for the planning not just for the organization or the registrations but uh, to to specify how a project will work to specify what problems we because like he or she will be facing in his or her scenario because like uh, as you all have just seen all of these three projects are unique in their own way like in madhu case uh, the donor the recipients the volunteers are wholly like like they they are different her business idea her business perspective is bit different from mine and mine is a bit different from bobby so we are unique in ourselves so i still like like the giving chain needs its project manager i am discussing it here so that we can make things clearer like as as you go forward next slide please so again the checkpoint too so we asked ourselves the like the same questions who our clients will be the clients here are not just the donors they are also the recipients the donor uh, can be the an individual can be someone who mm, like can be an ngo risk in my okay so i'm i will be explaining uh, like the donor the volunteer and the recipients like according to my project so it so it get much clearer much clearer so donor in my case are the individual the the people who are uh, going to visit these temples are are are, are staying in these expensive hotels the ho hotel managers like all of these people uh, who have like who are traveling to these places can be our donors i can like we all can ask them to donate something okay so next uh, next the volunteers and the drivers volunteers and the drivers can be the itbp like I, i talked about them can be me can be people again those are travel because i know uh, in uttarakhand we have 
many um, many travel agencies again like due to these holy places like thousands and thousands of people visit these places every month so i know that travel agencies has their own vehicles they drive up and down like throughout the year so they can be our volunteers they can be our drivers and finally our uh, recipient recipient again in my case are the people that has been so suffering that they, they don't have a roof above their head they don't have the schools to go so these people mostly students i'm planning next like like we are because it just like we have uh the same model mm, as we did in 2019 we have the donor the volunteers and the recipient okay so i have explained this i guess okay so then comes the checkpoint 3 here the things started changing so mm, for the checkpoint 3 we the first thing that we have included are the project managers and 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 their role of registering the donors the transporter the recipients there uh, as you all can read in the yellow box that project manager act as an administrator making enrollments decisions so like project manager will decide how the business idea will run and how things will work so also the registration process is one of the most in, important process we all will see this okay so yes how how like like how our model will work is that uh, we are um, including a concept of nfts so i know that nfts has been uh, a boom not just since last two or three years but they have been in 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 talk since since the blockchain has started so we so the idea is that whenever a donor wants to donate something he just pick up his phone or he clicks a photo and then send it. this photo is then and the information that like from where it is picked on like what the item is some basic information about the idea and then like his information if he wants to give it so these information plus the picture that has been converted into an nft will be then created uh, when will be converted into a dynamic qr code these dynamic qr codes can be used throughout the process these can change uh, these can store information these uh, these can um, give the give the whole uh, the whole confirmation that the that the process hasn't been changed throughout the throughout the flow that that after donor like this happened and after this this happened so it will give us the whole flow of the uh, the, the transaction so as soon as the donor has clicked the photo the nft is created a, a a broadcast message will be sent throughout the network that says that yes this has been done and then a private message will be uh, generated that um, let's say a transporter says that he wants to pick up that donation so that private message will be sent to that transporter because uh, we can't keep everything um, public we need to have something private the information about the donation will be private so all these information will be sent to the transporter the address um, of the pickup so if let's say that like if a volunteer agrees to pick pick up the donation he will send uh, another like a message to the donor that yes he is willing to pick up the um, pick up that donation and as soon as the transporter or the volunteer pick up picks up the donation he scans the qr code these uh, and while scanning this qr qr code he will be asked to take a picture and this picture will be of the same donation that the donor has said so again like we are we are getting the pictures of the whole process uh, these pictures will be saved in our metadata and the nft that that was created and was on the name of donor will be transferred to the transporter so now the transporter is the owner of our nft he has the donation a picture of that don donation when it was being picked is being stored in our metadata and again a broadcast message will be will be sent throughout the network can we move forward Uh, okay so then then comes the recipient so the donor has to has to get the get the thing and then finally get to the recipient so as soon as uh, like mm, the volunteer gets to the recipient again the whole thing happens again the recipient scans the qr code uh, 
he clicks the image this this image uh, is being again stored in a metadata the whole transaction is being is being completed when the nft from the uh, volunteer is being transferred to the recipient so this transfer of an nft not just gives uh, like not just provide us with the with the whole transaction but it also gives us the proof that yes a certain certain transaction or a certain donation has been completed all of these images that are being clicked at every point also gives us proof that yes the the thing that that was being sent was at the same condition when it was at the donor's hand and then finally at the recipient's hand so yes okay so for a data flow diagram so i'm i'm just going to breeze through this so that we can again talk on things that we have completed till now uh, okay so as like 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 for <clears throat> let's say if 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 a disaster at some like if someone from anywhere wants to wants to do something on the giving chain so uh, like mm, a trigger will happen and 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 then project manager will be assigned let's say if i want like i want to be a project manager of a certain project so i so mm, a giving chain not just the same thing a whole giving new chain will be will be formed for me so it's <laughs> It's really hard to explain this way, but uh, okay. So when the giving chain is set, then like I, because I'm the project manager, so I will have all the administrative uh, powers. So I will again, I will get to decide who my donors will be, who my transport or or the volunteers will be, and who my finally the recipients will be. And then these like the donors will register through our uh, website because we are planning on making a web app. So these donors, the recipients, and the and the transporters can log in through our uh, and can register through our um, through our web app. They like all of like all of them has a separate way of communicating with the giving chain. And through this, we will have a project. Yes. So and finally the the fourth checkpoint the impact measurement so we have a test run for the giving chain for instance so bobby can you please explain this whole test run of course so we did um we're still in the process of doing the donations for the giving chain but we did a few uh test runs so to speak so that we have the data points collected so the first one was just uh, picking up from a farm um, some vegetables and dropping them off at my mobile food bank we also did another collection um, on Labor Day and we got hundred pounds of food to the food bank and we're still in the process of two more collections. And what we do with the collections again is we just grab the metadata, like where the donation was, the geo points so that you know, the transporter knows where to pick it up, that kind of information. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Madhu to talk about her data points. Yep, I don't know if her connection is working, so I'll just describe this for you. Um, she had um, purchased some um, hygiene items for the women and had delivered them, um, I think, through a local NGO. Um, I've, I'm wrong, Madhu, and you can jump on, please do. Um, and it was very successful, and we're going to use, um, that was her test run, we have, we're gonna talk about in a minute, the collections that we've done for this project um, and how we still have to disperse um, those donations out and track them on our blockchain. Um, so that's coming up. So I'm gonna turn it back to um, Hardik to talk a little bit about the code this time. Yes, okay. So I'm going to start with the uh, Hyperledge of Firefly. So Hyperledge, uh, we the first we um, when we started the project, our plan was to build the whole thing again on uh, on the Hyperledge sorted. But when we start, so like, mm, like me, Bobby, we we both crashed on their weekly meetings, and we get to know that the example that they have used in two thousand nineteen is not being 
like it's not being used anymore so it's like the like like they have uh, got to a newer version which is not um, like the older one and the newer one are not compatible you know so it will be a tough thing for us to you know do the do the whole thing again just like we did in 2019 also the problem that we faced in 2019 was that we cannot use iot devices for our project so then we started thinking of uh, other solutions and then we got to uh, know about the firefly so firefly is uh, like is a technology created by collido there is and i get to know that like recently they have been selected as an official hyperledger project so congratulations uh, so like these guys are amazing they they have like like helped us not just in creating like not just in improving our uh, our technical solution but also you know answering mine and my own like every question <laughs> we have been bom bom bombarding them since 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 last 3 weeks and and since and and like every single day or every single meeting that we had together they had been great help so i don't know if they are here but if if nico and andrew like you guys are here again you guys are awesome and thank you for helping us so actually hardik it is at the same time their working group call that we usually are on <laughs> it's happening right sorry, now thought, so they're not on the was, call but they sent their best yes okay so uh, fireflies allows uh, allow enterprise blockchains to communicate uh, between each other using api so we are using that only so firefly has this amazing concept of cli that 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 makes uh, it makes creating like all these nodes and like communicating between each other so simple simple that uh, the the thing that we have to focus on was our backend so the that tech stack that we have is the giving chain apis that this is directly related to the firefly we are going to use okay so again like we have selected uh, ethereum blockchain to be used with uh, hyperledger firefly so that we can communicate again like like communicate through their apis we can we are going to make our backend uh, in our sorry in our ui in react and we are going to have a backend in sql so for our registrations and then finally we have the gaming chain blockchain that will be our end project so bobby can you please move ahead so that i can show pictures okay it's on the next slide so finally our checkpoint 6 the final submission so since we are on the since we are working on the checkpoint number 5 we still have to uh, complete then and get finally on the checkpoint 6 that we have three upcoming meetings the first one is on october 26 that is with social impact uh, then we have it on no november 12th where my mentorship will be ending but again like as i have told before that i will be continuing uh, my work with like the giving chain so on november 12th i will be having my uh, closing ceremony and and then on the november 17th we again have a uh, presentation with trade finance like and that will be a whole complete project so okay so defining our project like we have two teams the first one is the business team and the second one was the technical team so business the the things that the business team had to do was to create uh, social media accounts manage them have to raise funds because we have uh, raised few like, like we have raised some amount of funds that again can be very helpful for not just my project but especially for madhu's project and then finally to get the whole idea done to to make changes uh, like according to uh, the recent things and then finally we have the technical team so and technic the things that technical team did was to create and work on the github like we we have our ui uploaded on github any one of you can uh any one of you can just fork it and start working on it then uh, like as i've just told working with um, hyperledger firefly not just not just refined our technical perspective of the project but also gave us some of the ideas that were really amazing and then finally is to develop code and we currently are on this stage we are finally working on the code next slide please uh, i guess this slide is missing okay so no problem i will uh, send the link and then you can just open it okay so 
for a business development, we so we have our website. Nobody can you please open it so that I can explain like the two. Excuse me. Uh, can you please open our website so that I can explain? Oh, okay, easy. certainly. Yes, one moment. Okay, so like, let me talk about the two types of funding that we are going to have. The first one is the corporate uh, funding. The corporate funding is for our project development. So this type of funding is is for us to uh, complete the project to do, because like uh, for like Mona and me, we both are backend developers and working on the front end has been something new for us. So we are learning, but uh, making something uh, that is completely, you know, like at that level we need some funds so that we can hire people to work on that. So the second type of, so yes, can you can find it on investors, the page investors, you can, you can do your corporate funding through here. And the corporate funding is sponsored by the Linux Foundation. So it's all done through their portal. So you can check on it, you can track it and you can um, follow it through. Um, so again, like there's two ways to donate. One is to directly to the two projects um, through the GoFundMe page. And the other way is through the investors button on our website. Yes, and the second type of funding is the community funding. This is like uh, like these. This amount is like it's going to be used like fully. Not a single penny will be uh, saved because everything is till now is being planned to give to uh, Madhu's project, the Giving Chain India Women, so that uh, these so that this money could be used to buy her like the products that she want to donate. So yes, please if. If you want to help the giving chain in any way, you can do this by not just by applying, not just by sharing, but also by funding. Thank you. Then next, okay, yes, this was a slide I was looking for. So the the thing that the technical team is doing right now is like we have created our open source, like we are we are using uh, Firefly. Uh, for an open source project, Fire, like the link to Firefly CLI can be can be found here. I, Bobby, can you please post both of these links in the chat so that everyone here can access these? So if any one of you want to get into Firefly, the CLI is the is like what I think is the starting point. And the photo below is the UI that has been created by Mona. It's uh, It has the four um, parts. The first is the donor page. This you can see here. This this is where we can upload our pictures. These pictures will be uh, will be uploaded in IEPFS. So like we still need to get our NFT part done. So Firefly is working on creating its uh, NFT token in ERC one one five five. So they are still under development. So so till now we are uploading all the pictures in IPFS. So you can do this from here. The best part about this is that we can communicate between different nodes. So as you all can see that donor is a single node, driver again is the second node. NGO here uh, is a node that we have created separately from the recipient. Recipient can, uh, can, can be an individual, whereas NGO can be a whole organization. So the newest feature that we have added is of connecting our wallet. So we all can connect our MetaMask wallet through um, just clicking on that blue button. So if any one of you here wants to help us or wants to, uh, you know, just just wants to be a part of it, just um, fork the GitHub and we all can start working. We have our weekly meetings on Friday and Monday. So just drop in and we can, we can all start working. Okay, so we are open to questions, comments, and discussion. And thank you again, Bobby, for this amazing mentorship. I have learned a lot, not just uh, in my technical stuff, but also my soft skills have uh, improved. And again, thank you, thank you Bobby. Thank you so much from my side as well. You know, I can talk a little more freely right now. I wanted to thank you all for this exciting presentation. Um, I think there are a few questions in the pipeline, Bobby, if you want to 
to handle them or maybe somebody else would like to take the word and ask Hardy and Bobby more details into this. And there was a question in the chat about how you keep the recipients um, anonymous. Um, the whole point is not to keep, well, not to keep them um, anonymous, but the donors want to know who, the, or who, how to keep the recipients anonymous. The donors want to know where the um, donation goes. So basically, if it's going to a food bank or an NGO, um, that would be the point where the giving chain ended. Um, so the NGOs could um, enroll, again, it's up to the project manager who's enrolling them in the system, can enroll with just a name Food Bank A, or they can enroll with Flemington Food Bank at this address if they don't mind that kind of exposure. Um, so again, it really is up to the project manager to decide how much information is going to be released, but we do want enough information so that the donor can see that it got to um, the recipient that it was um, intended. Any other questions? I think that was the one I got in the chat. Um, if there's any all, please just shout them out. Everybody's shy, Bobby. You're afraid of asking maybe for more details. Anyway, Bobby, just a few words from my side as well. You know, uh, it's great to have you here today and it's an honor for me to learn more about the project. This is just the first of two meetings. The next one taking place in two months' time. We can have more details into these technical solutions. Uh, this is actually, from my side, it's so so much wanted and so much searched kind of me it's like this you know fills me up because you know I'm, I'm one of the promoters of the initiative bringing solace bridging solace within the hyperlogic community this is the good part of the trade and trade finance actually we're talking about both of them you know trade finance being the backbone of international trade and what we are showing right now is the positive a virtual side of trade and of course with the trade finance as well as social impact is involved um, so lots of good developments in the mid term maybe in the short term as well you see um, for me I can all thank you for joining I'll thank you again for joining us in two months time again you and the whole team so what I invite you to is think of it's like how we will do in two days. Expand discussions to more and more topics that will, of course, intimately be entwined in the larger picture. So I'll stop talking and handle it to you again, Bobby. Yeah. Of course, feel free to ask questions. Good time. We have a team. It's a good chance for I think one of the goals, I know that, that Hardik, um, Madhu and Mona and I really see this project going is um, once the platform's built, it'll be great for any kind of disaster relief. Like if you have a project like, a, a, like for instance, a flood in your hometown and you need to get blankets to the, the shelter, um, all you need is a project manager to enroll people in, in, in the systems there to track it, create the NFT and do all the hard work. Um, and we're hoping that that even can scale up um, and maybe it's something like the, the Red Cross or UNICEF or the UN, you know, could be um, made aware of um, for future um, possibilities and synergies with this group and their groups. So that's what we're really hoping for. And there is a question from Vendant, if you'd like to um, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, first of all, uh, a very warm congratulations to you and Hardik and Madhu as well for creating this initiative and working for the people all over the world. Uh, my question was like, it was a slight a doubt for, for my side, like uh, this is open source and we can contribute to it, right? But uh, I am very new to the blockchain space, like uh, I know a bit about uh, solidity and smart contracts and the working of various other platforms as well. 
but uh, I have very little uh, or surface level knowledge of uh, hyperledger. So is there any way for me to contribute because I would like to contribute in this course on the technical side. So is there anything that I can do? Absolutely. Can um, and I'm going to take this heartache and I are like, yes, there's plenty you can do. <laughs> um, if you are interested in um, joining the tech group um, on the Hyperledger public calendar, which I'll drop a link to. Um, we have a meeting set up for Friday where we it's just us and we really talk about what we're doing with the code and who needs to do what. Um, and I encourage you to join that meeting. Um, it is on the Hyperledger yeah, sure. calendar. Um, and that's a good way. And if you um, just need information on joining the Hyperledger community, everyone is always welcome to join the Learning Materials Working Group call Monday at one o'clock. Uh, where we talk to the community about how to become an active member in the Hyperledger uh, wiki pages and code pages. So um, if you can't make the Friday meeting, which we really hope you'll be at, uh, we hope to see you on Monday. Yeah, sure. I will be there on the both of the meetings. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Alice. <laughs> Anybody else have any other questions? Nope. Hardik, do you have any more I comments? Same, oh. Yeah, I had the same question uh, as the previous one. I wanted to contribute, but uh, I just need a link to that uh, meeting. Uh, I'm okay. sure I'll be joining Friday. Yeah. And I did put the link to the I, GitHub repositories in the chat too. So both of those repository, the Firefly and ours are there. And I am going to drop the chat to the calendar of public meetings, which is a Hyperledger wiki page, which lists daily the um, events that are happening in Hyperledger. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Let's see. So again, it has a scrolling page um, for everything that's happening and the uh, link for the Zoom room is contained within there. So our call is Friday, it's right here. And then there's the, the link for the Zoom room. And again, our Monday call is listed, where is it, right here. <laughs> our, so all the calls are listed with their uh, coordinating Zoom pages and everyone is welcome to come. There's no fee to enter. It's just a great learning experience. I can see that there's a question by Carlos that uh, can, I, yep, yep, Carlos, can you please ask? Can you put this in the chat? Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Carlos. Congratulations for this project. I think it's amazing. Um, and I really want to ask you this. Uh, why to rely specifically on, on blockchain when there is another technologies to do so? Okay, so the whole idea was to bring transparency in the system. So I know like the, we can use few um, other other databases or other technology. Uh, like when we when we talk about the scalability or when we talk about is it's going is it going to do the same thing as we have planned? So I don't think so because like again we 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 want the whole world to see like how the whole transaction has been done like on which steps did the thing like at at which condition was it and at which uh like because we will be storing the pictures right we we are also going to uh, transfer the nft so all of these things like are only possible through blockchain so yes and again when we did the project in 2019 nfts weren't really a thing um that people were applying to their business models um, and with you know this idea um, for the 2021 project to use nfts um, is remarkable only because there's so much potential with the nft so you have now that nft that that a donor can say look i did this this donation um, and I, I can prove it with my nft um, and you know there's no 
limit to what we can, as the giving chain people, we can sell those NFTs on like open seas and maybe generate money for the project. Or, you know, we don't know what the NFT markets or their capabilities are yet. But uh, for this project, the first time around, we had to print out three um, individual um, barcodes on a ticket and attach them to each one of the bags so that when the bag went to a different person, they retained the copy of their ticket. Now we're just transferring an NFT. Um, so it got rid of the whole idea of the IoT devices because we don't need to know like the temperature of the fish or, you know, it's it, these are just donations that are going from one place to another. Um, and hopefully that NFT will give you that immutable record um, that cannot be changed or altered. So that's for me why I think the NFTs um, are so wonderful. And again, like Hardik said, there's no... Um, replacing the uh, consistency, authenticity, and tracking of a blockchain supply chain. Thank you. All right. It looks like we have three minutes left. Does anybody have any more questions? If not, I will tell you that you can also get one of these very cool t-shirts. We're selling them on our Giving Chain website and the money will go to Madhu's project. So if you want one of these cool t-shirts, go to our www.thegivingchain.org and you too can have one. And now I'll turn it over to Andre to close out the meeting. Look, Bobby, uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Can't wait for the next one. It really is a pleasure for me to know more about this and see the developments. I'm pretty sure there's going to be very interesting ones. So I thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Stick together again. And, you know, to the attendance, my thank you all for joining us today. It was really, really nice to see you all. And can wait to see you more and more during the next meetings. We're going to join forces with other six, hopefully in the future soon again so stay tuned and uh hopefully i'll see you again talk soon talk soon bye everybody bye bobby bye bye, bye. bye. thank you great job Hardy. great job madhu